Hey y'all, Andrew here with Free Throws by Foot New Orleans. It is carnival season. We are on our way to Mardi Gras and we are at one of the key spots parades roll past. It's quiet right now, but soon this spot is gonna be packed with people enjoying the biggest free show on earth. But if Mardi Gras is one of the most fun things you could do, the parade schedule is possibly the most confusing part of that fun thing. There's a lot of parades. I'm gonna be referencing 51 of them in this video and they take place as far apart as early January and mid-March. If you're a resident or if you're a visitor, you've only got so much time and energy, some things are easier to get to than others, and different kinds of parades just also suit different people. So with all that complexity in mind, I'm gonna talk you through the timing of parades, the different kinds you might see, where they happen, and a week-by-week -week breakdown of the schedule. So first, the timing of parades. Mostly they're spread across four weeks. The main event is the week, all seven days of it, leading up to Mardi Gras Day itself. That's when the highest concentration of parades happens, and when most people visiting specifically for Mardi Gras choose to be here. But before that are two smaller but still action-packed weekends, and before that is a weekend with a single parade, plus a handful at the very start of carnival season on January 6th. Apart from January 6th, I'm not going to be telling you specific dates. The order of parades is pretty consistent from year to year, but dates aren't because they're all positioned relative to Mardi Gras Day, and that is positioned relative to Easter. So if I wanted to tell you when, say, the Crew of Bacchus parade happens, it's the Sunday before the Tuesday that falls six and a half weeks before the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. Obviously that is not helpful. And there also are small changes to the lineup from year to year. So what I'm gonna give you here is a general picture week by week with how many and what kinds of parades are happening and where to find them. Then once you're at the point of making specific plans, you'll wanna reference an online list of this year's parade schedule. We've got a favorite one linked in the description. It provides dates, times, routes, plus some backstory of each one and some photos so you can get a feel for the vibe at a particular parade. And the vibe of each parade does vary a lot. So let's talk about parade types. I'm gonna suggest thinking about four types of parades. They all have some basic things in common. They're all run by an organization called a crew. They have a predetermined route they go along and they're escorted along it by police. And they also have some kind of theme that determines what they look like. A lot of parades also end with a ball, a big party that might be invite only or might sell tickets to the public. But there are some big differences between these four types too. Some people like all of them, but some people prefer one in particular. And if you find yourself feeling a preference, it might help you decide when you wanna be here. First and most famous are the super crews. This is the small subset of float parades that have Broadway level budgets. So they have the biggest, most high tech floats, they throw the most stuff, and they tend to have celebrity guests riding along. These have come into existence in just the last half century or so, and they're a big part of what's made New Orleans Mardi Gras a travel destination. There's not a definitive list of them, but Orpheus, Endymion, and Bacchus are the ones just about always included. Regardless, if you hear Super Crew, you pretty much know you're looking at a long float parade with impressive production values that happens at night during the final week and is gonna draw a massive crowd. Second is another small set of what we call old line crews. Going to one of these is a way to see more or less what our parades looked like in the 1800s. It includes genuinely old parades like Rex and Proteus, but people might also use it to describe newer parades that use traditional design styles like Babylon and Hermes. If you hear old line crew, you know you're dealing again with the final week of parades and a pretty big crowd, but they might happen during the day or at night. For the third category, we're going way bigger. I'm gonna presumptuously lump together most of the other float parades, the ones that don't have quite the budget of the super crews or the traditional design of the old line crews, although some of these are historic in other ways. There's a ton of variety here. There's crews that put a lot of love into decorating their own floats. There's professionally produced ones that are more off-Broadway in scale. And there are some where floats are reused from other parades and from past years but the riders are having a great time and throwing a lot of stuff. These are the majority of the float parades. They're spread across the third and fourth weeks of the season. They tend to run in groups with several parades back to back. And because there's so much variety, it's worth looking into them individually or just take a shot on them and show up. They're the bread and butter of the season. So by seeing them, you're getting the main impression of the Mardi Gras we grew up on. 
Finally, there's a category I'll call DIY crews, which includes walking parades and a few that have a mix of small floats and walking groups. In these parades, most of what you see was made by the participants. They're likelier to have an element of satire in their themes at the expense of either current events or the rest of Mardi Gras. And the turnout is smaller, but really passionate. They happen all across the season. They're the only kind of parade you'll see inside the French Quarter, although not all of them go there. And they don't throw as much stuff as float parades do, but what they do throw tends to be handmade. As far as their position in history, a few walking crews are very old. Others are very new and represent an easy way for passionate newcomers to participate in Mardi Gras. And regardless of the age, all of them give a nod back to the earliest local Mardi Gras, which was only about DIY costuming. One last thing before we get into the calendar. Everything I'm telling you is just about the parades that happen in the heart of New Orleans. There are lots more in suburban areas, in other cities and towns nearby, and across the state. On the website we're linking, you'll see the parades organized by geography. So if you're a visitor, it's helpful to know which ones are in easy reach. So in the central part of New Orleans, almost all of the three types of float parades take place in what we call the Uptown or St. Charles route. DIY parades have a variety of routes, most of them in the French Quarter and the Marigny right next door. And finally, one of the super crews, Endymion, starts in Mid-City and then touches the Quarter and the Business District at the end of its route. So if you're located in the center of the city and you want parades nearby, you want the ones with routes labeled Uptown, French Quarter, Marigny, or Mid-City. And that's the ones I'll be sharing here. And now, our week-by-week -week breakdown. First, like I said, January 6th is the first day of the carnival season that begins the countdown to Mardi Gras. It's also called Epiphany or Twelfth Night, as in the Twelfth Night after Christmas. People who celebrate Twelfth Night often do it at home with parties or by cutting into their first king cake of the year, but there are also four smaller parades that night. The main event is the crew of Joan of Arc. It's a walking parade that happens in the French Quarter for an audience of local enthusiasts and mostly surprised tourists. January 6th happens to be Joan of Arc's birthday, and we have a big statue of her in the quarter, so this is a fun, medieval-flavored tribute to her. The other three parades that night could pass you by before you even know they're there. They're all Twelfth Night parties happening aboard our famous streetcars. The Funny Forty Fellows and the Funky Uptown crew both ride the St. Charles streetcar right here. The Société des Champs-Élysées rides the Rampart St. Claude line. People don't line the route to watch these the same way as with other parades, but if you happen to be around when they pass, you'll get a feel for how excited a lot of us get to kick off the season. After Twelfth Night, there's a break. Maybe long, maybe short, until week one of the main parade season. That Saturday evening, the intergalactic crew of Chewbacca goes through the Marigny and the French Quarter. It's a DIY walking parade with a sci-fi fantasy theme, and it only moved pretty recently into this weekend, which up till then didn't have parades in the heart of the city at all. So as of 2023, it's hard to call this a full parade weekend, but the season has tended to grow steadily, and now that one crew has broken into a new part of the calendar, we can probably expect more to follow in the years to come. Week two gives us the same DIY theme and more of it, with parades on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, passing through a mix of the French Quarter, the Marigny, and the Business District. Friday evening, you have Crew Bohème, themed around artists and bohemian life, and led by a green absinthe fairy. Saturday evening, you have Crew de Vu. This one's a mix of walking groups and smaller, old-fashioned, mule-drawn carts, and the vibe is puns, political satire, often local, and raunchiness. Sunday gives us two parades. First, in the late afternoon, T-Rex, as in Petit Rex or Little Rex, which makes fun of the bigger float parades by making incredibly crafted floats out of shoeboxes, complete with tiny throws. The week finishes with Crew Delusion on Sunday evening, another raunchy and satirical combo of small-scale floats and walking groups. This week might be a great fit if you prefer the DIY category, if you're not attached to going home with tons of throws, or if you prefer smaller crowds. And prices also aren't quite as through the roof that week as they'll get. Week three is another full weekend with parades Friday through Sunday. It's got a couple of the DIY style parades, Crew of Cork, a wine themed walking parade on Friday afternoon. And Sunday afternoon, we have the Crew of Barkus, which walks costumed dogs through the French Quarter. But this is mainly the week when we start to get float parades on the Uptown St. Charles route, and several of them each day. It starts Friday evening with the crews of Oshun, Cleopatra, and Ala all in a row. Saturday breaks into daytime parades with the Legion of Mars in the late morning, the crews of Pontchartrain, Choctaw, and Ferret in the early afternoon, and the Knights of Sparta and the crew of Pygmalion in the early evening. 
Sunday is daytime only, with the crews of Femme Fatale, Carrollton, and King Arthur back to back starting late morning. So there's a lot going on at this weekend. Prior to this point, you could travel here and get just a taste of Carnival, or maybe even avoid it completely. But from here on out, it is impossible to ignore. These sequences of parades mean that the touristic downtown is blocked off from cars most of the day, and a lot of public transit doesn't run. On the other hand, it's only three days. If you come early or if you stay late, you can still get a bit of the more everyday New Orleans experience along with the Mardi Gras experience. And if you want to do Mardi Gras with a little less crowding, a little more affordability, or maximum options for kid friendliness, this might be a great weekend for you. Finally, we get week four. This is the main event and it is the marathon. We have a straight seven days of parades from the Wednesday before Mardi Gras through Mardi Gras day itself. This definitely interferes with the basic function of New Orleans as a modern city for that week. But for the first few weekdays at least, we keep the parades constrained to just the evening. On Wednesday, the crews of Druids and Nyx ride the uptown route. On Thursday, it's the Knights of Babylon, the Knights of Chaos, and the crew of Muses. Friday evening, it's the crew of Hermes, Crew d'Etat, and the crew of Morpheus. From Saturday onwards, the season gets all-consuming. Saturday morning, we get the crew of Iris and the crew of Tux uptown, followed by the afternoon and evening ride of the massive crew of Endymion through Mid-City. Sunday, late morning, we get the crews of Okeanos, Mid-City, and Toth uptown, then Bacchus in the evening. Monday, the last day before the big one, also known as Lundi Gras, is a shift back to evenings only with the crews of Proteus and Orpheus. Peppered into this week are a few DIY walking parades, the crew of Bosom Buddies late Friday morning in the French Quarter, and on Lundi Gras, three simultaneous parades, the crews of Red Beans, Dead Beans, and Green Beans in the Marigny, Bayou St. John, and the Bywater, all themed around costumes decorated with bean mosaics. And then we're at Mardi Gras Day, and the float parade action starts early. First is the crew of Zulu at 8 a.m. Zulu started as an all-black crew in the days when parades were segregated, and it runs a variation on the St. Charles route that reflects that history, starting in Central City and ending in the Treme. At 10 a.m. comes the crew of Rex, one of the old line crews, which runs along the more common St. Charles route. And Rex is followed by the crew of Elks Orleans and the crew of Crescent City. Those two kind of fall into a fifth category of what we call truck parades, more typical of what you'd see in the suburbs. They're floats built from truck beds, decorated more simply, and with tons and tons of throws. Those go on long enough to keep you busy through much of the daylight, but there is so much else happening too on Mardi Gras Day. The early morning sees a couple of walking groups, the Half Fast Walking Club and the Mondo Cayo Walking Club making their way through Uptown. There are informal processions like the Society of St. Anne happening in the Marigny and French Quarter. There are black masking Indians and baby dolls and skull and bone gangs improvising routes through various parts of town. And there are costumes everywhere. It's impossible to do it all in a single year, but if you still got some energy in you, today is a great day to look for variety. Y'all, as you might have gathered by now, there's a lot to think about with parades, where to watch them, what to expect, what gets thrown and why. A lot of that belongs in another video, but I want to share a couple important details. First, you can imagine having all of these parades makes logistics of just getting around on a day-to-day -day basis massively complicated. And on top of this, there's so much about Mardi Gras that doesn't fit into the schedule. There are parades that pop up. There are second lines that we have all throughout the year. There are marching band rehearsals. It's always worth being ready, even if you've done some planning, for a few surprises to come along. Second, as far as picking where you're going to watch from, parades are long, bathrooms are scarce, and there's really no way to get to and from the route without walking a lot. Plus, unless you bring a chair, which you can do, you're standing the whole time once you're there. If that is daunting or impossible for you, and if you haven't planned the year ahead that it takes to get a hotel on the parade route, this spot right here might help you out. The city sets up stadium-style seating here along St. Charles in the Business District, right around our old city hall, Gowyer Hall. If having a place to sit and access to some minimal bathroom facilities sounds worth an investment to you, you can buy advanced tickets for individual parades. The cost slowly increases as the season goes on, and you'd also get to watch a little piece of Mardi Gras tradition as the parades pause right here to raise a toast to the mayor. We'll have a link to that below, 
just know those are the only tickets to Mardi Gras. If you see tickets on sale anywhere else, you're probably looking at a scam. Y'all, please let us know in the comments what your Mardi Gras questions are. And if you found our tips helpful, you can also tip your guides back down below. 